Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Chris Brown. I'm the uh, Managing Director at CBF. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for joining us all um, and taking your time out on, on a Saturday. Um, this is part of the CBF Coaches Association that we started at the end of last year. Um, it is the first in uh, the webinar series that we are planning on doing. And my association with um, our guest today, Nafa al uh probably goes back a few years and and we were in touch and and never really never really spoke and i i've kind of watched his journey in in admiration and um inspiration really as well it, you know i think it, it would be it's a, and this is why we've asked him to come on today um just to to describe his journey describe his story and i'm i'm excited to introduce him so um over to you nafa i'm looking forward to it Hi, Chris and Yuguin. Thank you very much for inviting me to do uh, to to do this webinar. I think it's a uh, number one a pleasure to share my journey with the with the coaches, other co coaches that I work or maybe talk or maybe met in person. Um, and I'm sure this is something we could develop, and uh, hopefully the learner uh, on on this webinar could uh, learn some of you. Uh, I will say. Uh, tricks um uh, i will say um knowledge they could maybe take on their clubs environment and they could use it uh, to develop it uh, further so thank you very much again um let me share my screen yeah okay so um, my name is Nathar Al-Khatib, and it's a journey that I'm going to talk about um, from Iraq to the Premium League. And as I said before to Chris, and it's, it's really hard to talk about myself. And usually I talk about football, I talk about tactics, about strategies, about games, analysis, uh, about coaching. But it's really difficult, but I will do my very best. So, um Okay, so um, I hope the learner will participate in this. So if you could please um, scan this barcode code using your mobile phone um, and write uh, what are you hoping to gain from this webinar. So I'll, I'll give it to you for one minute. What are you hoping to gain from this webinar in three words only? Sorry, I'm going to share again. I do apologize. So what are you going to gain from this webinar? Participants can use chat. So drop your answers to the chat. That's good idea. Good shout. Because if they are using their mobile phone, they will not be able to scan it. <laughs> uh, you could use the chat also. So let's see who's going to chat. So three words. Type in a three word. What are you hoping to gain from today. Okay, let's see actually, let's go to the let's go to the um okay. I think they use the chat is but long term development to be inspired. Okay, good. That's a good start. What else?
Okay. So, so, so Shifen uh, said long term development. Um, uh, Sai B to be inspired. Okay. Thank you so much for your input. Okay. So, my my journey um it will be it will be divided into four things so we're going to talk about number one is about who i am growing up and playing and the coach who i am the coach the coach's journey which is going to be maybe this is more interesting to a lot of people uh, and also coach developer uh, with the fa and um, which is my coach uh, education uh, journey um, and also the elite academies and clubs. So what looks like working within English academies and clubs. So number one, growing up and playing. So who I am? Um, this is a uh, this is actually an actual uh, uh, pictures of me playing in the backyard of the school where we used to have a mini tournament against class. So there's a class A, class B, class C. And we used to get together and we challenge each other and we play in this uh, backyard in our uh, break times. And at that time, <clears throat> um, you know, it's uh, this is uh, something really growing because at that time Iraq went to 19 and uh, uh, 1986 to the World Cup. So it's all inspired the country to play football and also try to copy the role model in football. So we used to have a, a great player who scored, he's the only player who scored in the World Cup called Ahmed Rali. So we used to be inspired by him because how he play, how he move, how he score goals. So this is where me, myself, playing in my school, in a primary school, where I used to, used to enjoy uh, football. But how, um, how did, how does that happen? So um, uh, myself, a lot of people, they don't know before I'm talking about football is actually, I am also an engineer. Uh, and I've got two degrees in engineering, one in software engineering and one in wireless communication. So it's a bit interesting, like, hang on a second, but you're a football coach. This is the story I'm going to try to mix and tell you. There is no limit to your dream and passion to to progress and to develop. So who I am? Uh, for me, number one. Family is important. I've got wife, which is a she's a doctor in uh, cybersecurity. Uh, she works for one of the university in in Cambridge. I've got a daughter. She's doing GCSE exams. She loves football and cooking. And son, he's doing his A level, but also he loves football and like to go to gym. But also the most important and influenced person in my life is my mother. She's a retired uh, lecturer. And I've got a brother who is engineer and a sister. She's engineer and both work in the government back home in Iraq. So playing summary. So my playing summary started from school, grassroots teams between 1988 and 1994, uh, where I used to play with my mate in, in the grassroots team, in the backyard, in the garden. But this is an interesting story, which is, comes to a lot of practical and theories in developing players is what we used to do. We used to do a lot of 1v1 and 2v2 2v2 and 3v3 in the gardens. And this is where I have developed the technical abilities. And I'm sure most of you who used to play football used to use the wall by hitting the wall to be the uh, direct opponent, what we call it in our modern football, wall pass. And it's just basically, it's a small tactics uh, we used to implement in our street football or, 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 or anywhere in the pitch if we have a wall to, to, to be the opponent. And this is where I start what we call it, develop a basic understanding of, um, uh, of what we call it 1v1 tactical when I was a kid. But also that helped me to develop my what is is my passing skills, but also how reacted quickly and 
punch it to the wall and go to the other side quickly uh, and uh, receiving skills and that will help me to learn how to work under pressure how to how to develop my receiving skills statically and on the move and all these tactical details that actually help me to develop as a player and then what happened is I noticed I was very good at the school. I was very good at my grass routine. Then I decided to go for a trial at um, what we call it Al Sina'a Football Club at the heart of Baghdad, which is I was about uh, 14 years old. I took my whole mate class. About, we are about 20, 20 players. I am the only one selected. And um, then I progressed from 1994 to 2001, under 18, under 16, under 18, uh, sorry, under 14, 16, and under 18 to the first team, where I start sort of playing football for the first team. However, what interesting on that time is I was the youngest player. I was 18 years old playing with players who are actually 25, 28, and they are all experienced players. And what interesting in Asina, this is a place where a lot of players could actually uh, go to a bigger teams in, in Iraq uh, because the way how they set up, because the way how um, bring talent and sort of develop them, not like what we have in the UK or other countries, but they worked on game programs, which is was um, a youth a youth league and really competitive and challenging. What interesting about this journey is, is that led me to do what? To play for my university college team, which is what interesting is on this university college team is, is we won the league Iraqi University League and what interesting in that team we used to be 17 players who play for Iraqi Premier Leagues and Division 1 and Division 2 so we actually what we call it monsters in terms of students who play in different clubs but they they also represent the college then I moved to um, uh, first team uh, al Kahraba. Um, which is also uh, at that time uh, a, a new club in Iraq, play for a premium league. And now, if you if you follow the media on the um, um, on the AFC uh, AFC Cup, is actually progressed to the semi final for the first time of its life. And what interesting about this club is my dad, who is the founder and the first president, or what we call a chair for this club. So I'm proud that a club that I represent once in my life progress to the Asian uh, AFC semi final for the first time. These are photos is my, myself when I used to play in Baghdad in the university. And I'm so proud of this playing uh, career. But what happened if, uh, what happened after that? In 2003, the war started where I couldn't carry on playing football. So I've been forced out the country and I decided to move to um to Dubai, um, and then I moved to the UK. But there is one important part of me as a person. I think I need to share this with you, and you need to understand how did I get from, the, how did I learn through this journey, who I am? And this is really important, is my core value. I call it, this core value is, it's not just word, I put them on a slide, Actually, I live and breathe this word. It's really important to understand what is your core value because it defined who you are. It defined what character. It defined your present and your future. So number one, what is my five core values? And I live and breathe these. Professionalism is always demonstrate high level of professionalism. Even my work with my coaches, with my players. And it's so important to stay professional. Whatever happen, this is a key element to for succeed for success. Other things, driven is willing to achieve and willing to be successful in whatever I do during any act, even a small act. It's I I always try to um, uh, drive and achieve and work hard to be successful and help other to be successful. Oops, sorry, what's happened? Yeah. 
honest, and this is really important, and being honest with myself and other is a, is a key element to what I do in my life and in my coaching as as a as a coach. Commitment, commitment to help others and develop others. So when we work with the when we work with the players or even coaches, we we forgot sometimes they are people, and we need to treat them as a people, and we treat them to put the to put. Uh, your effort and heart, uh, their development at your heart. And be respectful. Show and act respectfully to others. So these core values to define who I am. So, again, so what is my inspirational since my starting my, my coaching journey? I would like to be a role model for others. And I think I achieved this. Because um, it, it, it is, is, it's when you are in these kind of webinars, people inspired by your story, by your, by your journey, you know, they invite you and you become a role model. And I hope that me representing and being a good, mod, good role model is helping other to move form, forward and learn from this journey. Helping other. I always like to help others, either players, coaches, and at the end, they are people and helping people. And that aligned with my core value. Obviously, working full time in in uh, full time in football is always a, a inspirations, but sometimes it's difficult because there is a lot of um, a lot of complication and a lot of uh, uh, what we call it pros and cons working full time. Um, be the best coach I can be. First Asian manager. Uh, this is a dream uh, to be first Asian manager in the Premier League, but it's uh, it's in the list. But I can't promise I'm going to be uh, delivering that one day, but I will always do. But at the end, do the right thing. It's really important to do the right things. Um, A lot of people, uh, when I talk about um, the core values and aspirations, um, how did I get into the coaching uh, bit is in 2006, um, I think this is a, a personal story, uh, in 2006, my my dad was killed in bomb attack. And, uh, and uh, to be honest, I have lost the passion and desire to, to play football or even watch football. Um, however, I disconnect from football for about seven, eight years. And in the entire my life before that, I never thought I'm going to be a football coach. I never be, I wanted to be a football coach. Uh, but when my son was born in 2007 and he becomes six years old and he start kicking the football, this is where my heart uh, start be beating again for football. This is where I decided to pick up the phone into my mom and speak to her. I said, look, mom, I am doing a PhD now in cloud computing. However, I don't want to do, I don't want to carry on doing PhD. And she told me, what do you want to do? I said, I want to become a football coach. And this is where the journey started um, as a football coach. And it really was hard to tell my mom because she was driven for education. She wanted to push me to study. She wanted me to be a lecturer like her in 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 the university. But it's never thought it's gonna be me. Uh, so I decided to be myself. I decided to follow my drive, my dream, to be where I want to be. So, um, I'm gonna carry on talking about who I am. And this is really important. And we're going to talk about it is super strength. What is your super strength as a coach? So my super strength as a coach is planning. I plan really, indeed, really in, in high quality details, session, time management, uh, and also invest a lot of um, looking into a lot of things to 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 make sure I deliver. Uh, it's not deliver a session, but deliver whatever required in terms of what we call it, a planning model. We're going to touch base on it into my daily basis when I work with, with any football team. A leadership, 
it's not just about me. It's about the team, how you care about the people and how you actually empower them and motivate them to do their best. Uh, emotional intelligence it just basically it's not about it's not about um showing your emo uh, emotion but it's how you manage it and how you articulate it and how actually you um control it what happen if you are highly motivated how you control it whatever if you are angry how you control it but also how do you other how do you know about other feeling and understand other feeling and understand people's background Connection, one of my skills is connecting with people. Uh, I have a very high skills um, attribute that I build to connect to all levels, uh, to all background, uh, to all religions. Uh, this is one of my super strengths. But also one of my super strengths is the creativity, able to think outside the box freely and bring ideas and, uh, uh, and also um, moving things. And most importantly, know how to create a positive culture and environment for any place that I work with. And this is done through the years of experience of, of 10 years in football and outside football. So now it's all about you guys. Um, so tell me about yourself, who you are, which club you coach, age group and aspiration moving forward. So you use the chat to tell me more about um, yourself. So you've got two minutes. I want you to I want you to write so name, position, what is your super strength, which club you coach, um, which age group are you working in foundation phase, YDP, PDP, adult, what's your dream and goals? It would be great if you share that in, in the chat. Thank you, Mohammed. As the Jan FC and twenty one. Okay, Kasser, uh, Kassar, uh, from Syria, work in UAE, coach for under 13. Thank you. I, I hope you really, what is your dream? What is your inspirations? What is your goal? What do you want to achieve? Alcation electricity. Okay. Okay. That's uh, I like um thank you Saibi, if that I'm pronounce it. Um third year student doing computer science. Um, um he done his FA level two. I want to be part of coaching staff of my national team in India to lead them to the World Cup someday and working towards that. Great. This is a really great example. Thank you very much, uh, Sabi. Okay. So, you know, that's an interesting one is uh, Sayed, a PhD holder um, in management, 12 years of teaching experience, crazy about football, love that. And he wants to start his journey um, and dream is to coach on the national team one day. Uh, why not? 
Um, Shahid lives in Damascus, under 13, try to have the Asian training. Okay. Uh, his dream to become, um, trying to have a D license, trying to have a Euro, taking part in UFA courses, professional coach. I'm working on that. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, look, there is really great, great chat going on here. Great input uh, going on here. And I think this is where it's all about you. It's it's really important is to know who you are and what do you want to do. And you need to write this down. It's really important to write this down is knowing who you are, knowing what is your super strength as a coach and build on this. Sufyan, United Arab Emirates, India strength. I like that, uh, Sufyan. Uh, strength, man management. He works in every and disabled dream coach at European club, making my current working club a bigger one. Well, why why not? That's a, that's a good also. Uh, really, look, uh, this is uh, this is a great. Honestly, guys, this is really great that you actually uh, share your dreams and share your super strength. Is knowing who you are. Self awareness is really important. You as a person. Um. Okay, let's move on. I'm just cautious about the time. So what is, where is my, you know, I haven't started talking about my coaching journey yet. So my coaching journey. So I'm going to talk about the coach. So what is my qualification? So let's talk about my qualification. So I've got a master's degree in wireless communication from Brunel University. I've got master's degree in football coaching and performance analysis from Manchester City UCFB. I've got B license. I've got Advanced Youth Award, which is what we call it, the Elite uh, Advanced Youth Award from the FA, which is level four. It's one of the highest qualification in the UK and actually in Europe for developing um, elite uh, youth setup. But also the most important is the Youth A uh, level five. Um, and I've got special um, three, four certificate or a word in psychology in football. I think this is sometimes get neglected, the side of psychology in developing your teams and players. So my coaching career summary. So I started back in 2014 and I said that's linked to my story when I decided, my son decided to play football. So I decided, I went to, at night, I was observing coaching for a whole year because he was coaching my son and I went and asked him, how do I become a coach? And that's happened in 2014. And I got my level one in football. Then I joined as an academy coach voluntarily with the under 12 in Histon Academy Football, which is just around the corner from my house. Then I joined um, a Norris City Football Club, but this is not the actually the main club or the elite academy setup, but I joined in their what we call it a uh, player development centers or that we call it regional development centers. So I become the lead development coach for uh, 12 to 15. Um, then I moved to uh, then I moved to my first ever experience in a professional setup, which is as a head coach for the foundation phase at the Cambridge United Football Club. Great experience. This is my first ever experience, and I really enjoyed because we used to play against really like Chelsea, Tottenham, uh, Crystal Palace, and I used to, to visit great clubs. Then I moved uh, after that uh, uh, as a youth development uh, phase coach, academy coach at Peterborough United, which is now they are playing in League One in the UK. Cambridge United used to be League Two, but now they are also in League One. After that, I joined uh, as a first team coach and performance analysis in Biggles Wade United. Uh, who who do, who does not know Biggles Biggles Wade United is a step five team is uh, run by Gil Guillaume Balaga is the uh, famous TV presenter uh, and he written seven books and he's a good friend of 
Xavi, Maradona, and Messi, and he is so famous. This is a great experience where I was um, doing their analysis, helped them into uh, their football uh, matches. And then I and then I decided to take something different also while I'm doing coaching. I become a board director in inclusion and diversity, try to help coaches, try to help players in my city. We have over 22,000 players, female and males, uh, players from under six till adult football. And I try to make sure football is inclusive and diverse to everybody and welcome like any people from different ranks to come and join. Then in 2015, I have taken a radical decision because I was inspired by um, a lot of people who does these presentation in the FA, I used to have, I used to go everywhere in the UK, I used to spend a ridiculous amount of money developing myself, going there and traveling two hours just to attend one hour CPD. And I was so fascinating about how these people uh, relay the message to us and start actually building what we call it my skills in terms of how I'm going to deliver things in the future. So since 2015, until now, I present everywhere in the world. Then I joined in, then I joined uh, after that, after 2000 um, and, uh, and two, sorry, 2015, I joined in 2001 uh, Watford for the first time I joined a premium league club and I worked there for, um, for one year. After that, I, I've been offered a role with the FA, um, which is a coach developer, which is developing the coaches. And finally, this year, I have joined proudly Luton Town as a youth development phase. And I hope this journey continues because it's one of the best journey I ever had in football so far. And that if if not a lot of people knows Luton Town, Luton Town play in the Premium League at the moment. So what did I gain from this journey? You know, all this lovely slide, all these lovely clubs and and logos and uh, um and actually, yes, it is all about the journey, but what did I learn? What experience I gain, what knowledge I gain, what skills I gain? Because a lot of people they go and work in the clubs but actually do they learn something do they develop their skills or just do they develop their knowledge so what did i learn is obviously football education so through these journey in terms of as a coach i have developed myself tactically technically psychologically socially and also that by education by going and study the football through the fa courses um, and also the academic courses also, I have developed coaching skills, how to interact in terms of to um, different level from under five to adult football team and being able to adapt to the level of the players and the people around you. I have developed a massive skills in performance analysis where I have the, the, the knowledge I gained through my study in master degree uh, and the courses I've done with the FA and also putting things onto practice while working in clubs is actually develop my presentation skills and performance and skills. And I'm able to break down the games into small amount of information and facilitate these analysis to help the player learn. Um, I have developed mental toughness. Mental toughness is the ability to overcome the challenges that comes you come across. Don't think, guys. When you work in a clubs or any any environment, a professional environment, you will not have a challenges. Challenges is there. Challenges is will challenge you mentally. Some people will try to stop you. Some people will try to block you. But one thing is just keep going. And this is where I have developed mental toughness. If you throw me in the deep in the deep sea, I could swim now. By the way, just to let you know. Resilience. This is where I face um, is develop a resilience. I face these challenges strong and build these muscles, not like a physical muscles, but actually I'm able to face these challenges with positivity and moving forward. 
Most importantly, I have developed my CV skills. If I look at 10 years ago, or even eight years ago, even five years ago, when I used to send, send my CV to clubs, and a lot of coaches do this mistake, and I hope this webinar will help them to understand. When you send the CV, be honest. Do not put do not put things that is not necessary. Do not just fill the CV with a lot of a lot of fluff and it doesn't make sense. If you've done a one hour CPD or or uh, or a course uh, without any things um, articulate or link to it, do not put it. Is the important things is actually in your CV, what actually do you know, what you could bring to the table when you apply for your for the next role. So I have developed really a massive, uh, nice looking CV through basically from failures and, and challenges. But one thing I learned, less is more. So do not actually put too much things into your CV and you think, okay, my CV is a five, five pages, and you only actually never had any coaching experience. My CV, guys, only two pages. And I've been doing it for 10 years. But this is where, where I have developed as a, as a, as a, as a person and as a coach. Um, and also, um, this is unique, this is tech technique. And don't be afraid to ask a question, search online, see other people what they do. Because I, as a recruiter, when you go and send your CV, they have maximum seven seconds to look at your CV. Seven seconds to make a decision if you are the right candidate or you are a potential candidate to be interviewed. And if your CV doesn't represent you well, I don't think you know what you're talking about. So really, really important in terms of CV development. That's what I gained through these 10 years. Also, a lot of people in football think by doing coaching courses, it's in Asia or in Europe, that's it. No, football is not just about qualification. And I learned some from a really wise man a while, while ago. He said, when you go and deliver on these courses and doing these courses, coach the player, do not coach the qualification. And one of the things I learned also Observe, develop your observation skills. Observation skills, this comes from observing games, breaking down games into pieces and develop. So see what's going on in really, really focused lenses to help you to break things down. Because one thing is when you talk to some coaches, I heard oh, I have a very toxic tactical knowledge. And actually, when I put a clip for him, Show me what do you what do you see, uh, and he doesn't show me what I want because the tactical knowledge comes also from developing your observation skills, and this is really important to get into it through these what I learned through these ten years. Planning model is really key to know what a planning model looks like. So I'm going to tap tap in on it. Planning model is is really linked to each other. If any of these fail. The rest will fail. Player, player, player engagement, practice design, intended outcome, coach behavior. I'm not going to go and touch, but that's something maybe you want to invest and read about it more when you have time. So I have I have stolen this slide from somebody. And I all I I I'm 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 basically I hide it, this guy, but I have no who's who's this guy, but I really liked it. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, I only show you the positive and wonderful world of football and is about my journey but do you know what guys football there is no it's not a straight line if you want to go on football journey it's not in a straight line it's going to be a bumpy road it's going to be a curve on this road it's going to be a challenges in the road you might have puncture you might you my car broke down but one thing is an advice keep going even in the smallest steps. So a lot of people think about this. So undergraduate, you spend 28K. Postgraduate, 80 grand. B license, 900. Other things, 4,000 pound. But you still 
this is how much it costs you as expenses, but you still, you will have low salary, unsociable hours, relocation. You might, you work in a club that we relocate to a lot and disposable. So also reward, belong to somebody big, go into competition, help an other and enjoyment. So there is pros and cons enjoying the coaching journey. I didn't want to share the beautiful side of it, but also there is a lot of what we call it under the eyes. You don't, a lot of people, they don't see. Okay. So I'm going to talk about coaching journey. I'm just cautious about the time, about coach education journey. So I've talked about myself, who I am, and I talked about me as a coach. Now I'm going to talk about a coach education journey as a coach developer with the FA. So the coach developer, this is a wonderful photo of a coach I have supported in Algeria. I, I knew him through... Um, through uh, one of my meet webinars, and we kept in touch. Uh, I was fortunate and lucky to go and visited him in in his in in his city in Algeria, delivering coach education. But the good things about he actually he assisted me, helping me to uh, to actually simplify the key messages from my own language in Arabic to their accent in Algeria. So it was a fascinating experience. I never thought I'm going to struggle with some of the Algerian accent, but he helped me to, to lay the messages to the coaches and it's worked really well. So what is my, where did I deliver a physical courses around the world? So number one, I coach in United Kingdom, London, MK Dons in Cambridge. I went to Patna in Algeria. I went to Turkey in Istanbul. I went to Iraq and deliver coach education in Baghdad with, with the Iraqi private and with the Ministry of Youth and Sport. I went to Kuwait and I went to Ajman with Quarto in UAE. So I've been really, football, football journey is open the whole world for me to to be able to deliver actually with the FA, with, with the Kuwait FA, with the Ministry of Youth, with the with the private company, with with the with the local FA in Patna in Algeria. And and this journey, I learned every single one of those is helped me develop me as a person. So do not underestimate underestimate these little things. Five years ago, none of these countries will call me, but now they are start to call me because they saw what I'm doing. That this is, this is a great that where I actually I start travel the world also. So if you are passionate about developing people, it's great to to develop your skills and put them forward. And that, believe me or not, one day it will cl clicks in. But also. It's not me just delivering on on premises, but I've been delivering, as I said in my coaching journey since 2015. So where did I deliver, coaches? I deliver to the Qatar FA, and this is one of my interesting. When they called me, they put me on that list where is a top top notch uh, lecturers and speakers and coaches, and I am one of them. You know, they put my name actually. And I was really nervous. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was so nervous to deliver these this particular because you're going to be judged. It's either a matter of life or death because 300 coaches, top coaches in Qatar, they're going to look at your presentation. And this is, was one of my favorite, best ever coach education I ever done with the Qatar FA. But also, I've done also with a private company in Kuwait. Um, I've done in Algeria online, and I've done with the English FA uh, through different uh, uh, different webinars and different subjects. Um, I have done also with the Iraqi FA when they invite me in coronavirus, and also I've been uh, deliver on National Olympic with the UAE. Um, and most importantly, um, I worked with the Academy, who's in London, who's they got connection with a couple of things. And this is really important. And now I am delivering with CBF. And I think this is a, 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 a privilege to join uh, this organization and to be the first ever webinar uh, with them. So thank you guys uh, in CBF. 
And so what did I learn on this journey as a coach developer? Developing people um, where I could interact with people, help them to get better as a coaches. Teaching and coaching skills. I have developed teaching and coaching skills. Uh, I've been able to actually use technology in an effective way. As you could see, I'm going showing off a little bit here is my presentation skills as I know is out of the scales a little bit than other people. But uh, it's something I'm really proud of, the technology, analysis technology, uh, um, softwares, which is actually lay down the, the foundation for any presentation or any key messages I want, or actually to help the learner to learn better way. And also, and a lot of people forgot about this, when they join any coaching journey, coach education is networking. It's a beautiful job, honestly, going and meet people and build that network everywhere. And you will feel you feel valued, you feel respected, but also you give people back what um and um, what you have learned and share your knowledge and expertise and your appreciation with the appreciation with them. So, what's looks like working with English Academy? This is a this is a picture five years five four years ago four I think four years ago yes five four or five years ago. At Peterborough, when I was working with the under 12, it was, you know, talk to him. I, I can't remember what I was talking about, but I think we were losing on that game. And I have turned turned down, turned this game upside down. We won it in the last five minutes. So what well, all everything was good. Okay. So what did I learn from working in 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 elite academies and clubs? Again. It's all about developing people and players, managing team, working in a professional environment, but also uh, teaching and developing skills. People learn in a different way, learning about principle of learning. That helped me actually to uh, sharpen my skills, understanding who I am and back to where who I am is why is this is my super strength. And also, we talk about game model, we talk about coaching philosophy and playing philosophy, but what is it? What is it? How do we implement it on the ground? A lot of people could talk football, but actually, do they deliver football? And that's a different matter. And this is where, and this experience and knowledge uh, and skills I gain is how to put things from a piece of paper into a practice on the grass. And this is a great in these 10 years. And guys, I don't, as I said, I'm trying to stick on the time and I promise, you know, I just want to tell you something. Great things never done by one person. They are done by a team of people. So if you are in any time of your journey, don't think you could do it by yourself. It's, it's a team. Either your supporting team, the coach who work with you, the other coaches who work in different age group, the the analysis, the the admin, uh, the organizer, the third party stakeholders, anywhere you work, it's always it's done by a great team. And I'm just gonna leave you with that clip. So again. Um, it's a five, it's less than five second clip, but everyone play a role. Everyone is important uh, in this in this five second. So it, it's your turn to be one of these people. Okay. So before I finish, what did you learn today? Three words in the chat, please. Yes, it's a long road. I agree. Never give up. Keep learn. Keep learning. Trust the process. Yeah.
Go hard, teamwork, help others. Yes. Success depend on yourself and others. Yes. Well, mostly depend on yourself, to be honest, than others. Yes. Hard work to teamwork to success. Once again, thank you guys. Uh, the train running on the current track reached the desired destination. Okay. Thank you, Thar, Captain Thar. He's a friend of mine. It's good to see some familiar. Faces. This is in Arabic. Thank you. Shukran. Okay. And boss. Uh, okay. I don't usually share my WhatsApp number in public. Okay, thank you guys. And the most important bit is this. Is you could join me on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for CBF, Coaches Association. Thank you so much, Nasser. Really interesting story. Beautiful presentation. And of course, so many obstacles on your way. Um, shall we start with Q&A? So yes. uh, yeah, we still have a few minutes. So feel free to ask Nasser uh, anything about his journey, about his pathway whether it's coaching or coach education or anything he does outside of football as well. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I have a few questions that came in before the webinar, so I'm going to read the first one. How do you handle with stress in football? Um, I think um, it's really hard, but I think it's this is where you have to develop what we call it in one of my slides, mental toughness. Uh, the ability to understand self, who you are as a person, and, and, and understand how you develop the skills to cope with this stressful situation. So sometimes I used to get, um, all, all days I used to be very angry quickly, like just like a faster than Ferrari when accelerate from one to a hundred. But um, it's it just train yourself to distract from the moment of stress and then re regather your thought and emotion and then stay calm and then maybe, um, respond develop techniques so i remember one day somebody really upset me and usually what we get to emotion and we start either writing an email and we we express with emotion the wording with emotion what what did i do in terms of technique i went to my email i written it down but i never send it it's because it was a stress situation i never send this email I went three days, then I, do you know what? I read it and I said, I'm glad I did not send that email because that could develop the situation further. So what did I do is actually I went in a small chat with the person and express my, 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 my thoughts about the situation. And do you know what? Is at the end of the day, you develop a really positive work 
positive work relationship. You don't, you are not here for power control. You're here to move the club and the environment to the forward direction. So it's not about you. It's about the environment you work. In. This is where I align it with my approaching things professionally. And this is one of my core values. That's great. Uh, good question from Shifin. Being from an Asian country, how did you cope with English culture? Um, number one is, I think, I think we, it's hard. Let's put it this way. I think this is a good question. It's hard. But one thing is, when you work with English culture, number one, you need to understand the culture value. You need to understand the language. You need to understand the people that you work with. You need to have an ally within the culture. You need to have a mentor within the culture. Not a lot of, you know, like in any country, they have a good people and they have a bad people. But one thing I learned through this journey is whatever comes across a challenge or I just focus on the, the goal. How, what do I want to achieve? And this is where I become more you develop skills, more you in, in, enrich your experience and knowledge, more you be able to communicate effectively with your, with your colleagues, with the environment you work with, then it will become easier. Obviously, if I look at the, my journey in 10 years, 10 years ago, am I the same person 10 years ago? I'm not. Am I the same person six months ago? No, I'm not. Because it's become better version of yourself, not a better version of others. You challenge yourself on a daily basis to get better. Because you will say to me, okay, I want to develop this to be this, but why you want to beat him? No, beat yourself, challenge yourself, develop yourself. And do you know what? I tell you what, you will be surprised. Everything will fall in their places correctly. Amazing. Uh, another question came in. Uh, how do you manage to combine IT and football career? Dedication. Desire, passion, motivation, drive uh, to achieve. And this is a very good question because when I was a kid um, and I think I was like 10, 11, 12 years old, I used to sit and watch Iraqi TV, national TV at that time. And I used to watch some of the Iraqi famous people who are they, for example, a guitar player, but also... He's not just facing famous in playing guitar, but he's also was famous as a dentist. Or he's an artist, but he's a surgeon in plastic surgery. So I used to think when I was a kid, think in a second, how these people, they're really good at two things. And this is stuck in my mind and become like they are sort of a role model for me. Um, and I wanted to think, hang on a second, if they could do that, I could do it myself. And this is where I have I have passion for IT and I have passion for football through since I was like eight years old. And I combine them together. And probably I did not mention in my presentation, um, I work for, for University of Cambridge as an IT manager. So in terms of um achieving uh, you know, working in the FA, working in the um, University of Cambridge are working in one of the best two organization in the world but just basically drive motivation passion put effort I tell you what put effort don't think it, because what happened if you don't put effort somebody else will do and you're left behind I hope I answer this question I agree what does your normal day look like that's an interesting one <laughs> um difficult <laughs> that's a really difficult question to answer but i'll tell you difficult it's um my looks my daily looks like is i wake up around uh 7 30 quarter to eight 
Uh, I'm fortunate enough that uh, the university job just around the corner. So I leave the house 20 to 9, go to work from 9 till 5. And this is my daily job is um, as an IT. Then if I have a coaching, so I leave about early a little bit and I travel to Luton Town and do my session from 7. But I have to arrive an hour early. So I, um, I coach from 7 uh, till uh, 9 and then I get back home. Uh, if I don't have a training session on that day, I spend it either doing my preparation uh, for the UFSC courses and checking with learners, uh, help them de develop them. Other than this is sometimes is spending time on social media sometimes. And this is something that's important. And uh, and also um, I get, you know, some um into invitation as a tv pundit which is in in iraq and middle east sometimes online and uh, enjoy this uh, journey but it's a busy schedule so sometimes i don't have time really for resting but that's that's if you want to achieve you have to give something away all right we have a few more questions in the chat uh Shadim I don't mind. I don't mind to... to answer them all. By the way, so yeah, yeah. Ask ask more questions. <laughs> uh, what's the best age to to start coaching? Shadi is asking, and the second one from him. Uh, what application, basically, what software would you advise to improve the skills? Um. So there is no best age to start coaching. Uh, I mean, in England, you could start coaching from under 16. When you are 16 years old, you could do level one. It's not about age. It's about um, the knowledge you possess, the, the experience you have, and the skills you have. So it's not about age. But from England, and from under England 16, I think the other country, I'm not quite sure, in Dubai uh, or in, in in other country, I think 18 or 20. Um if I'm not wrong, but um, the the criteria in UA in in sorry in the in, in England is different than the criteria in other countries. So that's number one. There's no I think the most important things. There's no such a software. This is the best. It's the best in my opinion is 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 when we talk about learning. So people learn in three ways: by telling them, so sound, by visual, by showing them. Um, or by actually make them doing it by themselves. So you, you need to learn when you work with your players or even if you one day if you become a tutor or lecturer is understanding how do they learn. And when you're understanding how do they learn, it actually, okay, hang on a second, I need to develop my skills in this area further to help them learn in a better way. But in terms of my my advice always develop your presentation skills using um using the powerpoint as you saw my presentation as i have to mention that a few times yeah okay uh next one player development or game result which one is more important um it's a really difficult question between the the culture I'm coaching in at the moment in England and the Middle East Middle East culture, because Middle East culture is all about winning at all cost. You must win. You have to win. But actually, if if we talk about ourselves when we play football twenty years ago as a kid, or maybe more than this, do you remember the result? Well, I don't know who asked this question. Do you remember the result? So if, if we played 25 years ago or 30 years ago, do you remember? Does it mean meta? What it mean meta is what did I learn through these games? So I don't I don't have a problem with winning games, but can we help the player to have some learning activities during these games? But if you if you focus on winning, winning all the time, what's about how you learn from your failure? How are you going to teach the boy or the girl, if you coach girls, to learn from failure? Because 
There is no teams win every single match on the planet. There is no. So my question is, are you thinking about personal gain? And we talk about the role as a coach, which is helping others, or, or about developing players. And one one things I would leave it to you with is, is it about you or is it about them? Because in my opinion, it's about them. Yeah, hard to agree with it. To disagree. Uh, Nijin is asking, what are the challenges you have faced while coaching youth and senior teams? Maybe one challenge that just comes on top of your mind. Uh, this I think the senior team was is implementing a new playing philosophy. Um, I think that's a one of the biggest challenge, um, in in trying to implementing certain philosophy when we play. Um, so it's interesting was is, um, I was able to implement the out of possession philosophy. Clearly, they liked it. Uh, but in 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 playing philosophy, when we have the ball, sometimes they did not like that because it's required a lot of movement and uh, involving of the ball, which is some players uh, they don't want to run or I I, don't, I can't remember what's the reasons, but that's one of the things. I think it's uh, the challenge is also understanding the culture of the players, um, uh, and yeah, I think one of the challenges is also is is me working full-time in IT and going to coaching was really hard for me is sometimes to spend a lot of time off planning. But um, I overcome this by by really uh, time management. Um, another one, what are the requirements to become a football coach educator, football coach developer? Um, you, need, you need minimum a B license in the UK, you have a B license in the UK. You need to have experience as a coach. So you worked in professional clubs. Uh, you need to have uh, uh, interpersonal skills. You have to have a, a good communication skills and also a very good presentation skills. And one thing is able to stay humble and you put the learner interest at your heart. I think this is this is where um um this is important to to be able to be able to join the FA or to work as a coach developer and helping others. The year is saying I want to get a clear idea of the game model followed in English football <laughs> in a nutshell. Okay. Um well and if you want to get clear ideas i would suggest go to the fa website and you will see what we call it what they some information in possession some information out of possession and in transition and how they approach things and um, building game model it's not uh uh I, you wake up in the morning and i'm gonna build my game model that's not gonna happen game model is you have what we call it outline the playing philosophy uh, in in details, and this I believe the game model will evolve by time. More be you become experienced as a coach, more you educate yourself, more you work with others, more you put hours on the grass. I think your gaming model will develop and uh, evolve. All right, uh, a message from CB, one of the last one. Uh, wanted to know on why you had studied the master's in performance analysis and coaching with UCFB along with your coaching licenses. Was it for a different approach or something else? Um, and this is, um, I think I should not, um, um, I should, I did not mention that one of my things is is learning. Um, one of my passion is learning. And I thought, I thought is added to what we call it my core value uh, be a better version of myself or be become a better coach all the time um, and challenge myself is I wanted to build 
more knowledge, more experience in a different aspect of football. A lot of coaches think is is going to coaching qualification and they go to pitch, put the practice design, and that's it. That's it. There, this is all where football. Oh, look at my session. This is a brilliant session I put. Look at how no football is not just about putting uh, going to a qualification and put a session on training ground. No, football is more than this. Football is people management, emotional intelligence, um, leadership, um, uh, analysis. So, talking about the course. I think this is where I wanted to link theory with the practice, but also developing what their data analysis looks like and what uh, technology could be implemented in helping player to develop better and develop my skills. And this is something really, I, I think this is, I want to emphasize one thing's important message here is the day, and I always say this, the day you decided to stop learning is the day, is the last day in your coaching journey. Thank you so much, Nessa. Really pleasure to, to meet you, first of all, and to have a webinar with you. Um, we are going to share the recording of this webinar on CBF Coach Association in Telegram. So I'm just going also to share a couple of slides on uh, what's going to be next. And basically, we, as Chris mentioned in the beginning of this uh, presentation, that um, we also do coach education here with CBF. Uh, we have courses coming in uh, literally in a week. So basically, on Saturday, we start FA Level 1, which is International Foundation Coaching Course, uh, then following by FA Level 2, which is International Intermediate Coaching Course, and then once a year course, we have FA Level 3, International License Coaching Course. So uh, if you want to upgrade your license or if you are not a football coach yet, but you want to start your journey, please feel free. There is a QR code here. You can scan it right now with your mobile phone, get onto our uh, website with more details um, and join us. We, we have all our courses face-to-face uh, -face in Dubai. And uh, after those, we have more in, in uh, probably in May. Uh, so we will be happy to meet you all in person. Uh, we also are going to uh, have more webinars, more guests in the future, hopefully once in a month at least. And CBF Coach Association, if you are not there yet, please join us. Uh, you need to have Telegram app for that one. Uh, basically, this is a platform where we share uh, mostly jobs uh, in ZOE, in local academies here in uh, lower division football clubs. Uh, then we have more information about our courses, our webinars, uh, discounts, and we also run CPD courses, uh, usually one or two day events also in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi. Uh, everyone is welcome. Uh, feel free uh, to join association. Uh, download Telegram app and then scan QR code here to, to join us and stay in touch. That's a great networking opportunity. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It was a great pleasure to have so many people and uh, to have so many people all over the world, especially in the Middle East. Uh, thank you again, Nasser, uh, for 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 being with us uh, was a very interesting journey and uh, hope to see everyone here in Dubai and uh, let's stay in touch in CBF Coach Association. Recording will be shared uh, in Telegram group tomorrow. Thank you again. Yes, I think Nathar, you, you were muted. If, yes. Uh. Thank you, Eugene, again, and thank you for uh, 
all the coaches and wishing you all the best uh, in your coaching journey moving forward. And I hope uh, this webinar uh, helped you to get some ideas. It was really hard to combine all these uh, four elements into a presentation, but I think I did okay his job. So uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, th I think we actually raised high level, you know, high standards for the next uh, guest of the webinar, you know. <laughs> Need to find someone who can keep the standards from now on. No problem at all. Pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye and have a good evening. Bye-bye.